I'm here at HPE Discover in Las Vegas with Prasad. And one of the things you guys are showing off here is something called swarm learning, but I have no idea what that is. Yep. Swarm learning is a mechanism of doing the machine learning training at the edges in a decentralized fashion, wherein which multiple of the edge nodes can come together to learn on their local data set and share the learning with the other peers to get into a better state of the overall training of the model. So how is that better than any other way of training yeah. a model? So if you look at today in terms of the model training, the way how it works is it needs large amount of sample data sets and all the data sets it is expected to be in a central location, that's where the training happens. And if you see that it has a certain kind of the challenges, for an example, in terms of the machine learning training is going to be huge amount of data sets which need to be sent into a central location which is inefficient. And now, the data ownership and the privacy acts prevent sharing all the data into the central locations. So the acts like GDPR probably prevents one to share the data outside of our boundaries. That causes a challenge. And in some cases, the demographics will have the biases. For an example, depending upon where we are trying to do an image recognition or a face recognition kind of algorithm training, the training data set might be biased or see more of a white skin faces or a dark skin faces depending upon the demography. So this would impact in terms of the, the model's accuracy and bias the model. And on top of all these things, the data is a new currency and people want to find a way to monetize the data so they may not be comfortable to throw away the data freely into some location or a central place where somebody else could train on that and monetize it. So looking at these challenges, what we do with the swarm learning is, instead of moving the data into a central location, we see whether we can take the model training itself to where the data is. So that it trains on the local data and just shares the trained parameters with the other peers in that network to achieve the better accuracy level. So it helps to prevent or stay the data where it is. So it provides the privacy. The data is not moved, but the parameters are moved. So it reduces the data movement. And since we are training on the local data set, it also provides the better accuracy in terms of the bias cases. So with that, how do you make sure that you're not just getting each node having its own learning? How do you aggregate all those learnings into a common um, that's a Set. great question. So what we do is, uh, so initially the nodes who wants to participate in terms of the learning, they all register into a network. It's a decentralized network built on the blockchain technology. And the data scientists who develop the algorithms, the models, so they ship the model onto the clients who register for this form learning. And they use that model and the local data set to train the model locally. And after each batch or an epoch, they share whatever the learning they have completed in terms of the parameters to an elected coordinator. So they use the smart contracts in the blockchain to elect a coordinator. And the coordinator collects the parameter from all the clients who participate in the network and merges the training parameters to achieve a global state and then chips back the new set of parameters into all the clients. So the clients pick up that and continue the tra training using the local data set. So they continue this process of training on the local data set, merging at a frequency till they hit the desired accuracy level. As we can see here, since we are using the same model and using a blockchain network and a smart contract to elect a coordinator and merge the parameters, so each one of them will do the same training and share the parameters to achieve the global state. Got it. So with that, like what's a, so you mentioned facial recognition as, yep. as an example. Yep. What would be, what's kind of your, your highlight use case that you're showing off here at Discover around this swarm learning? Yeah, one of the key use cases is if you take into your medical uh, or the healthcare kind of an industry. So one of the biggest challenges if we need to develop, let's say, in, analytical model to identify a rare diseases. 
So it's most likely that no single institute would have all the necessary training data set to train the model. So that means essentially they have to collaborate with other institutes to train the model. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, due to the data ownership or the privacy, they may not be in a position to share the data with other institutes. So they can use the swarm learning as a mechanism to build a common model to identify this disease and train on the local data set and share just the trained parameters. So you're anonymizing it as you, as you aggregate the learning. Yeah. So that, that, that's one of the classic use cases uh, which you're looking into that. And the and, one which we are... Oh, sorry, I, I, did, I didn't mean to... Sorry, you so go ahead. So. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Let it could also be applicable into the cases because most of the time what happens is the models which are built in the central and chipped onto the edges, over the period of a time, the accuracy of the model diminishes, mainly because of the data drifts or change in the environment or additional of a new parameters which eventually means the model need to be retrained and redeployed. It's a continuous cycle of development, deployment, validation, and redevelopment, redeployment. So now since with the swarm learning, we are doing that learning at the edges as the data comes up. So it can automatically provide the mechanism of continuous learning. So it enables a near instantaneous kind of a learning as well as the inferencing which is available. So, taking a financial domain, if we are developing a model for fraud detection, with the existing information about the frauds, and now suddenly in some part of the world, if you find a new way of fraud, and you can, the node which is running there can train itself to identify that fraud, and with the swarm learning, it can share the trained parameter with the other participants, so that everywhere in the world, it could identify even that type of fraud. So a financial attack that works one place today isn't going to work someplace else place. tomorrow. Yes, because they would learn through the swarm learning. Yep. That's pretty cool. Okay. All right, thanks, Prasad. Thank you.